Hi there, it's Watos here for his weekly report on uh, the Blues games. And uh, it's just 24 hours since um, the final whistle went, whistle went, the whistle went at St Andrews yesterday. And uh, uh, sorry for the, for the delay, but this afternoon I've been watching the girls um, almost doing the same thing as the men giving away a two-goal lead, but they hung on for a 2-1 win, and well done to them. Uh, that's four in a row now they've won. Uh, and on my other screen, I had the Rangers-Hearts game, uh, and I'd just like to say about that, that Jack Butland is still, and always has been, the best goalkeeper in England. <coughs> but, what a day yesterday. Uh, Trees falling down on the lines in Sussex. Delayed my journey by an hour. Uh, I got there, no problem, and uh, looked at the team and I thought, what on earth is going on here? Um, what kind of formation is this? Uh, great to see Laird back. Um, but no Dembele. Um which seemed amazing, uh, and Burke was still in the side. Mm. Anyway, turns out that uh, uh, Burke had found himself up front alongside uh, Jay Stansland uh, in a very, very different lineup. And what do you know? Everything I said to Wayne last week. Make it this your day. He did. He changed the side. He played a different formation. He played a wonderful style of football. Lots of passing. Lots of lots of aggression. Lots of um, uh, pressing. And we stormed into a two-goal lead just after half time. And everybody in the crowd was chanting his name. Well done, Wayne. Um, and. <laughs> I agree with every every sentiment of that. It was it was an excellent it was an excellent effort on your behalf to to change things and make us look half decent. One thing I got to remember, uh, Wayne, is that this is Birmingham City, and if every bit of bad luck can happen, it will happen. And just as that, they brought four substitutes on, who had no effect. They were awful, Ipswich, until the 80th minutes. Absolutely awful. We played them off the park, uh, and you can tell me you can tell me there is good good side as long as you as long as you like, and I just can't see it. And they've won ten in a row. Well, hey, if it's any, yesterday's anything to go by, it's a lot of good luck. Now then, why did why, why did the why did we give away two goals so late on when we were so much on top? Well, the first thing, the first tragedy was the loss of Laird, who'd run the show. He kept, he kept, he kept the whole of the uh, left-hand side locked down. Good night. Uh, don't bother, you know, don't bother to come. And then suddenly goes down with cramp. Now, we certainly didn't want him to get a bad injury again and lose him for another six or eight weeks. And sensibly, uh, they took him off with 10 minutes. We can't, we, we, we two goals up 10 minutes to go. We can't, we can't possibly cock this up. Well, within 20 seconds of him leaving the field, we were, it was 2 1. Uh, we sent Longello on and switched uh, Drame from left, where he was excellent, where he was absolutely storming, slipped him over to the right. And within, as I say, within 20 seconds, the winger had tied him up uh, inside out, back to front, put in the cross, and it was no. The, the, it was another Southampton job. Why, why, why are these people tapping the ball in unmarked from some six yards? And why, why just because you 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 switch your fullbacks over does the whole defence suddenly become uncertain and, and, and start looking rattled. Well, 
it got worse as uh, this time the right winger came down and skinned our full backs out <laughs> and one or two midfield players as well. Got the cross in, the ball bounced around, nobody could get a clearance on it. Their bloke volleyed a superb effort and it's 2-2. Now, there's, there's 10 or 12 minutes to go then because although it was the 80th minute and they scored in the 90th, uh, there was still six minutes to go. And I honestly believed that um, we still had a chance. We still had got enough power on the pitch to score a goal. But we didn't, and we, we we looked we looked panicky and 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 all over the place. But okay, two two it was. Uh, I don't think anybody left the ground that wasn't disappointed. But I was also pretty satisfied in what had gone on during the ninety minutes. And well done, well done, Wayne. Can't knock can't knock you for that. But you've got to remember, you know. If, it, if bad things can happen, they will happen at St Andrews, I promise you. And <laughs> don't take anything, anything for for a certainty because I've been going a long time and when I, when I saw him hobbling off, I, I knew, I knew we were, we're going to struggle, struggle for the next 10 or 15 minutes to hang on to a 2 0 lead. Now, that shouldn't happen, but it's St Andrews and it does. Now, then, uh, so Wayne was reasonably happy. He, he, st he still has a terrible, um, in his interviews afterwards, for running people down. He doesn't call them out by name, but we all know who, who, who he's talking about. Um, and he, he must stop doing that. He must stop doing that. Uh, Leave that for the dressing room. Uh, don't, 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 uh, don't report it on TV. It's not good. Uh, love the interview with, uh, with Laird afterwards. What a, what a, what a guy. What he, he loves, he loves playing football. He loves being part of what he is. Uh, he's a lovely man, and he smiles all the time, and <laughs> please, please, God. Let it, let him be let him be fit for next week, please, please, please. And as soon as we get Buchanan back, the better. But uh, anyway, six thirty tomorrow. All will uh, be discussed uh, on uh, on YouTube, Facebook, or whatever you want to watch it. Uh, and the boys from the Tilton will be back at six thirty tomorrow. God bless you all. See you then.